This podcast is produced by Visionary Studios. Hi, everyone. I'm Mitchell Rail. And I'm Wade Clausen. And welcome back to Let's Unpack That. So, Today is June 1st, which means that it is officially Pride Month, mm-hmm. the month celebrating the LGBTQIA plus community. And to celebrate, we decided to bring together a bunch of our favorite podcast guests from the past year or so. And there is no one else better to kick this off than the duo that really sets the tone for every month of the year. They lead us through, they set the mood without their leadership. like. I don't even know if my emotions would know how to work. Like they really just set everything in place for thousands of people across the globe. Um, so welcome back to Let's Unpack That and happy Pride to yeah. a twink and a redhead, Grant and Ash. How are you both doing? Like, how are you guys kicking off your Pride celebrations? Hi. Well, this is kind of awkward because we're actually not celebrating Pride this mm-hmm. year. Let's just say a... <laughs> Brand reached out to us and offered us $250,000 each to not participate in Pride this year. Um, and just, it, oh, it, go ahead. Just part of the deal that we were given, <clears throat> it was like, you do this, and just the only kind of constraint is don't celebrate Pride. Yeah, and who are we to turn down Chick-fil-A? So we will not be participating in Pride and we will be working with Chick-fil-A to bring awareness that it's okay not to celebrate Pride. So is there anything else a part of the brand deal besides abstaining from Pride? Yes, no, this is a huge deal for us. So they are actually going to fly us out to Mike Pence's summer home in Indiana. And we are gonna meet with him and talk about some issues that he's really worried about. And they have some sort of like woodsy activities that I think only I'm supposed to be going to. Ashley's supposed to stay back, but there's some like, it's like a summer camp they kind of described it as. Um, and all the while we're kind of just vlogging and documenting it on behalf of Chick-fil-A. Of course, there's going to be, you know, like it's branded content. So there's going to be like chicken and like stuff like that. Yeah. But we're excited nonetheless. We're really excited. And we know that it will be controversial, but you know, it's $250,000. Right. You know, like, You're like y'all wouldn't do it. Come on. What do you say to your followers who maybe, you know, hear this and they're maybe surprised that considering your content in the past that is kind of catered towards the LGBT community? Well, like, I don't know if it's ever been catered towards. No, and, and a com- that one community. thing about us is that we're always going to be honest and we're going to tell them, you guys, we are being offered $250,000. $250, so... Our real fans will understand and yeah. support us as they have with yeah. our other brand deals or whatever. They just say, get that check. They yeah. don't and really it, care. It doesn't matter. I mean, we've been all over the world with brands. We've been to Pyongyang for money. We've done, we were raising awareness for um, cow milk. We said, you know what? We need more yeah. of it. We need to have more farmland. Febreze. Um, Febreze, yeah. This year, you guys aren't celebrating Pride, but are there any tips that you have based on your past Pride experiences? Well, Pride does happen to also fall in hot June. So just be hot. hot. It's not hard. Wake up every day. Just be hot. Wear your sluttiest outfit. Pride is like, if I'm being real, it's a time where a lot of people feel pressured to wear certain things or whatever. You are you could wear whatever you want, be whoever you yeah. want. You're hot no matter what. You don't have to go to the circuit party if you don't want to. Mm. You don't have to go to this music festival thing. Go to the parade. The par- I went to the parade when I was 17 or something, and it was the most magical experience of my life. One of them, not the most, but you just feel so much love in there, like, actually. Didn't you see Hillary Clinton? Yes, I saw Hillary Clinton. She walked (laughs) past me. I was like, oh, my God. And then I voted for her, and then here we are. Here we are. I will tell the Chick-fil-A people to not listen to the part about the parade, Um, just to keep that check clearing for you both. Yeah. People change. Thank you guys so much, and I hope you have a wonderful trip to Mike Pence's summer home. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having us again. Thank you. Yes. Bye, guys. Bye.
Next up here, we are joined by Randall Porter. So Randall joined us last summer to share a little bit of his experience in the world of fashion. Everyone is rushing to get together their pride looks for possibly multiple different weekends of pride. And we felt there was no one better than Randall to come to the rescue and save us from potential catastrophic pride looks. So first off, Randall, how are you doing? How are you celebrating pride? Oh, I'm good, guys. I just dropped a candle line. So getting into more of the lifestyle things and moving away from clothes. But we're going to do that later in the fall. But yeah, Pride, I'm going to kick it off by going to, um, I guess, the official Pride would be um, L.A. Pride. Well, we host first and then it's L.A. Pride. Okay. And then I'm going to go to New York Pride. So is there a favorite like Pride Festival that you've gone to? Honestly, New York Pride, it's because it's my birthday. Okay. Um, I celebrate my birthday there every year. This year, my birthday falls on a Tuesday after Pride, but we're still going to celebrate it. Like to get all of my friends in one spot for my birthday. Mm-hmm. And have pride. I like to say that New York throws me a party. So. <laughs> it's literally for you. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the Randall that parade Porter is. pride party. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that means y'all need to show up. We're on our way. We're yeah. booking our tickets right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Randall, when you have all these different weekends of pride that you're planning to attend, how do you kind of think about what you're going to wear to all of these? Like, how do you put together a look for one of these events? I like to call myself like a fashion gay. Like, I'm not the one that's going to wear like white sneakers, the whole thing. I want to like have a look. I pretty much try to go the opposite of what everybody else is doing because I want to stand out. Um, so I kind of just start with like, what's my vibe for pride? For New York pride, I want to be comfortable because it's hot. You know, I want to have comfortable shoes stuff like that. So I always start with being comfortable, meaning like, am I going to feel comfortable when I'm in a room full of all these gays and what I'm wearing? And like, am I physically comfortable because all the walking and the heat? Um, So I kind of start there when I'm thinking about what I'm going to wear. Well, is there any like elements of a pride look that you think are always like a win, like are always going to be a good choice for any any pride look if you want to be like stick to your basics like a great pair of jeans that fit your ass that's perfect i always like to do i want i don't want to use the word industrial shoe but like something if my feet get stepped on you know like a boot i know it's hot and i know that sounds weird but i like want also i'm short so i want the height and i want like you know, if somebody steps on my foot and we're dancing on the floor, I won't feel it. So usually I'm like in a boot, in a jean. My go-to is like a mesh tank. A mesh tank is something that I think everybody should pack, a white tee. Um, and then even though short shorts are like what we do in gay culture, they're kind of like going out, you know, if you want to kind of stand out, like look for like a linen jean, maybe like I've seen recently that longer shorts are in. Um, so if you're into that as a look longer short, then go for it. How do you feel about people coming head to toe in rainbow? People can do whatever they want to do, um, whatever makes them feel comfortable. I'm just not a fan of it. I've never been a fan of like the whole head to toe rainbow. It's just not my thing. I do like the little Target suit that came out recently. Oh, okay. That's, it is pretty cute. And I was like, you know what? If I'm ever going to do it, I'd probably do something like that because it's so dramatic. I don't need to wear rainbow for y'all to know that I'm gay. <laughs> you know, yeah. we're, good. We're, we're good. Is there anything that you would stay away from when it comes to a pride look? Rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> You're not like the super flashy, more of like a little more like subtle, like classier look. Mm-hmm. Always. I'm always in like, a monochromatic looks. I don't know if, it, well, I'm also just came from the pool, so I'm like super wet, <laughs> but I'm wearing like monochromatic everything. That's my go to, like, great for summer. Well, that's really good advice. Thank you for that. You did mention a little bit ago that you recently launched a candle line. Do you want to tell everyone a little bit about that? Yeah. So, like, part of my business, I just kind of got tired of like selling other people's products. Um, I mean, don't stop sending them. <laughs> like, I love them, but I just, kind of decided that I wanted to showcase Southern makers in the South. I'm all about scents. I'm all about like black owned. So these girls I went to college with, they started a candle line. They're two twins. They're called the Glow Duo. And we collaborated on the Randall Porter candle. Um, I like to say it's a candle for men and women. It's also a soy wax candle. So you can like melt it down, use it for oil, um, you can wear it. You can do whatever you want to do with it. It's pretty great. I love it. This is the first of many things that's coming out in my like 
on my website, I'm going to do like a collection of like jewelry with another company. And it's all people like in the South or Alabama or something like that. So I, supporting me, supporting other businesses. So that's how the candle came to be. So for people that want to check that out, what is the link to your website? Um, it is therandallporter.com. Well, thank you so much, Randall, for sharing your tips. And I will definitely be checking out the candle. And I hope you have an amazing pride. Yes. Um, you too, guys. Come to New York Pride, birthday, 34. Okay. Yes, we're coming. We're on our way. We're booking the flights right now. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Next up here, we are going to do a little bit of pop culture trivia. We have William Ferrante, Joe Hornberger, and then lastly, the man who honestly like carries gay Twitter on his back, Jay. Welcome to Let's Unpack That. So we've put together 11 different pop culture slash just trivia questions for you all. We'll go back and forth asking these questions. And after we finish asking the question, whoever raises their hand first is who we'll call on to answer it. And if that person's wrong, then whoever else has an answer, we can go from there. Make sense? Perfect. So first question here. In May 2019, Tati Westbrook posted an expose video on James Charles. How many subscribers did this cause him to lose in a single weekend? Will? Uh, wasn't it two million? That's close, but... <laughs> Who the hell is Tati Westbrook? <laughs> it's the bi, the bi sister. <laughs> The bi sister Ooh, video? Uh, <laughs> bi sister. <laughs> I don't know much about James Charles. Do you know Jay? Yeah, I do. Like I always like quote her videos. Was it four million? You guys, it's in the middle. It's the correct answer is three million. Wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. So close. So the next question is each week Billboard reveals their hot one hundred. Which three artists have the most entries on the chart? Oh, okay. Wait, wait, I, I think I think I know what. Uh, I'm gonna say Taylor Swift. Nickelback and Adele. One of them is yeah. right. Taylor one Swift is right. You got one right. Taylor Swift is right. Is this entries or is this number ones? Entries. So they've just been on the Hot 100 list. Is it uh, Taylor Swift, Glee, and Ed Sheeran? Glee is correct. Glee, Glee is correct. <laughs> we'll give a point to both Will and Jay because you guys both got a part of it. But the third one was Drake. So the order is Drake and then the Glee cast and then Taylor Swift. Next up here, Sasha Colby was recently announced as the most recent winner of RuPaul's Drag Race. What year did the show premiere? 2000... I'm going to say 2009. That's correct, Will. Yes, 2009, look at Good you go. Job. Taylor Swift has embarked on the Eras Tour and reportedly broke up with Joe Alwyn, her boyfriend of six years. What singer is she allegedly now seeing? Oh. I think Joe had that first. No, no, Jay knows his name though. I don't know his name, but I know his band. Yeah, it's 1975, Mad <laughs> something, I don't know. But do I have to say the last name too? Oh, oh, it's uh, Maddie Healy. Matt Healy, yes. Okay, we'll give it. We'll give Jay and and Will. Give it to a Jay. Give it again. to Jay. Jay got okay. it. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. Call Her Daddy is the most listened to podcast by women, and its host Alex Cooper recently announced her engagement to a film producer, Matt Calipan, who was Alex's co-host for the first two years of the podcast. Mitchell. <laughs> These who are some is very it? specific gay questions. I feel like a horrible gay. I don't know who any of these people are. Do you know what Call Her Daddy is? No. Was it Shady I don't know them. You don't know either, Will? No one knows? I know that there was the drama behind it, but I don't know the... The original other co-host of Call Her Daddy was Sophia Franklin. Mm -hmm. And then over COVID, they like got in a big drama over like the contracts. And then she left. And now Alex Cooper does it herself and gets paid like 20 million a year to podcast. Good for these people. That's amazing. <laughs> Good for them. Kylie Minogue recently announced her newest album, Tension, will release this fall. What year was her debut album released? Jay, we are not allowed to answer this. This is solely for Will. Oh, Me and Will are both Kylie Minogue stands, so... Okay, I, I'll everyone can answer. Um, oh, boy. You said uh, what... Year did her debut album come out? Oh, she's gonna hate me if I get this wrong. I think, I think, 1988. 
Yes, 1988. Look at you. Wow. On May 23rd, 2007, ABC's The View infamously went to a split screen during a fight between <sighs> Elizabeth Hasselbeck and which View co-host? Um, I know this one. Elizabeth Hasselbeck and uh, Rosie O'Donnell. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Proud of you. Thank you. I know. Story yeah. moment. <laughs> <laughs> In 2022, a strange loop was awarded to the Tony for Best Musical. What is the most awarded production in Tony history? You should know this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the most awarded in history. Of the mm -hmm. Tonys, yep. I know it's an old show. Like, it's pre-2000s. Is it Phantom? No. Mm -mm. No. Sad. It does have a P in it, though. A P in its title. Bad, bad, bad. Theater gay. I have no idea. <laughs> Should we give another hint? There are people that are behind the scenes. The, produ the producers? Yes, yeah. The producers is the most awarded- Is it really? Production of all time in Tony history, yeah. What a gag. Also, that's a, that is not pre-2000s. That's my fault. What are the names of Kim Kardashian's kids? Ooh. Go ahead, Jay. Uh, oh God, so many. West, <laughs> North, St. <laughs> Chicago. Ready? There's one more. West was wrong. Think, think biblical. <laughs> Not think West. biblical. <laughs> what? Okay, sorry. Okay, think <laughs> Chicago. Uh-huh. Uh, I haven't heard about this one since they were born, so. Yeah, yeah probably <laughs> me neither. So I'm like, I don't. Uh, the last one was Psalm. Oh, but yes. Okay, yeah. We'll give it to you, Jay. I mean, Thank you. Chloe and Halle Bailey are currently thriving in their professional careers. What freeform show did they star in together as sisters? Yes, uh, Jay. Ronish? Yes, yeah. Slay. Slay. Uh -huh. Jay, you're absolutely killing this game. You're absolutely <laughs> killing this game. Thank you. Jay won. June is Pride Month. What was the reasoning for this month being selected? I it's, was it not? It's when the Stonewall riot happened, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. I don't that's say that, but I somebody else go. <laughs> no. <laughs> See, you guys both get it. So you guys each get 500 points. So that means that Jay won mm -hmm. with a lead of a few points. So congrats, Jay. Yes. Yay. Well, thank you all so much yeah, for taking you. the time to be here today. Um, we'll put you guys' yes. socials on the screen so that everyone can follow you. And Jay, you're the winner. So congrats. You truly are a Ooh. pop culture enthusiast. Ooh. You're a winner, baby. <laughs> you're winner, baby. <laughs> Where's my sign and my scepter? Am I... Uh, <laughs> Period. 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 We're shipping it over. <laughs> thank you so much. No, I want all of it. Thank you. So lastly here, we have the one and only Noah Tayeb. So Noah has his new brand, Sunny Days, which everyone is so excited for to get their swimwear on mm -hmm. and just have those really cool looks. You guys can check it out on Instagram at, at Get Sunny Days. Check it out. It's such a cool brand. So cool to see this vision come to life. But this will be your third appearance at this point. You're really about to be like the most appeared guest in history. Like someone give him a trophy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we would love to play a game with you today called Unpack It or Block It. So my friend Victor came up with this. It's a genius idea. I love it. We're going to give you scenarios, Noah. Um, and you're gonna say unpack it, like you're gonna stay with them. You're gonna like see the relationship through or block it. Where goodbye, see you later, not even a break, just done. Yeah, no breaks here, this is like forever. This is over. Got it. Are you ready to play? I'm nervous, but I'm ready. <laughs> so first up here, he's the owner and chef of a Michelin star restaurant, but he exclusively shops at Vineyard Vines. I want to say, it's so hard with just that little context. I want to say unpack it because okay. that's something that we can easily influence and change in someone. <laughs> <laughs> he comes home from work and Noah's like, I'm sorry, your whole closet just like went to Goodwill. Like, I don't know what oh. happened. <laughs> Babe, I shopped for you. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can change. You can, you can change a man. In yeah. that way, in that way, yeah, okay. So he's an amazing communicator and you never get into fights, but he tells his mom about every aspect of his life to the point where she's almost like a third person in the relationship. Like she's just way too involved, even though it's really great. As long as it stays in normal conversations, I would say unpack it. Um, I really value someone who has a really close relationship with their oh, mom. And just because it doesn't that. get weird, mm. I'll, so, but like, I'll but, take it. But like, what if she was like, 
too close and involved in the relationship, you know, where she's like, she's kind of like knows every detail. Would you still stay with him? But if he's an amazing communicator, I could communicate to him that some details are making me uncomfortable. <laughs> and <laughs> see, that, that's gonna be my problem. This is the thing. I'm gonna Matt unpack is like everything. An unpacker, yeah. I don't block. That's my problem. Mm. Okay. <laughs> he regularly surprises you with gifts, um, and he's super. You know, he's a great guy. We've kind of. It's the same. It's always a great guy, but. His room is like fully Disney themed. So it's like Mickey Mouse wallpaper, like rug. Like he's a Disney adult. Is that what they call him? Yes, Disney adult. So like the rugs, the bed set, like the bathroom, like everything head to toe Disney. But But he has, he has an eight pack and he has, makes probably, let's say 250 to $350,000. Yeah. And he is uh, also a good communicator like the other one. (laughs) Perfect man. He just has Mickey on his wallpaper. So you wake up every morning, look about the ceiling. It's just a picture of Mickey, like right above the bed. (laughs) I can fix him. (laughs) I'm not even going to fix him. Give me a five step plan. I think I would have to block the Disney gay. If it's just the room and he's not an immature, childish human the rest of the time, then I feel like that's fixable and we can unpack it. If okay. he's just fully in the child mode, mm. I'm mm. gonna have to pass. Yeah, like maybe you could find a middle ground, you know? Like you'll enjoy going to Disney with him potentially. I mean, I love that. Yeah, I love yeah. someone who taps into their own younger self, who love, I mean, I watch cartoons all the time. I watch animation yeah. movies all the time. I love Disney. But yeah. if it takes over your entire life, I feel like there's something you need to unpack and I don't know if I will be there for that. <laughs> you connect so well. Like it's a connection unlike any other. Conversations just fly by. But he does poppers three times a day to take the edge off. (laughs) (laughs) How the fuck do you guys come out with this? I'm going to have to say block it. I'm going to start saying block it because these things, I feel like you cannot change. That's an addiction, baby. (laughs) (laughs) He also must have like no brain cells left. Wait, I was I was in Sydney for World Pride recently and the amount of times these people do poppers on a regular day had me shook and they call it ammo which is like the technical name for poppers literally at lunch when it goes to the bathroom and do some ammo oh because it's ammo nitrate <laughs> no yeah. Oh, okay yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes yeah yes. So they, yeah. why like why are they I like, don't, that's just such a weird yeah, case look into the camera and ask them why are you guys doing <laughs> why? so much why? Why? What is <laughs> why is there so I don't much know, popper but- Dang. So much poppers. Okay, this one's not wacky. I'm actually just curious to hear your take. So you live in Cali. You need a car, right? But he's, he's this guy's a great guy. He's a little bit older than you. Um, not old, but just a bit older than you. And he makes good money and he's a cool guy. You like him, but he does not drive. He cannot drive. And he just like won't give you a real reason as to why. So you're just like the chauffeur. You're the guy that like takes you everywhere and he just has never, you just, you bring it up and he just doesn't give you anything. So like, I just, I can't do it. And you're like, I'm going to have to say unpack it because unpacking means he's going to have to talk about it and we'll have to understand why he doesn't drive. Maybe he's scared. Maybe he can't physically drive. Maybe, he, I don't know, but I'm fine. I'm finding this many excuses, but I'll drive or we'll Uber. We'll find something. We'll unpack that. <laughs> if you're a kind person. I'd be like, fuck that. Okay. <laughs> this last one here is Pretty simple, nothing too crazy. He's super into fitness and he loves working out together. I know that you like working out with your boyfriend, right? Stair climbing. Yes. <laughs> I was scared. <laughs> but he prays every night that he wasn't gay. Pray the gay <laughs> way. Oh my God, poor boy. I don't mean to start discourse here, but is it your job to teach another grown man? You know, that he doesn't need to be. Yeah. And also that could be tricky if you were in a relationship. Like it's one thing if you're friends. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because basically you're fighting yourself. And you're praying that you're not with me. Yeah, never mind. Block it. Block his ass. Okay, that was my goal. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Good job, Noah. Good job. But you did just mention (laughs) that you were at World Pride. We can talk about this briefly. What was the experience like? Like what was it like? Insane. So what part was in Sydney this year? Um, I have a friend who I met when I lived in New York, who's been in New York for 10 years, but is originally from Sydney. And he goes back every year. And ever since I met him, we already had plans for me to come visit him. 
Um, so I booked this trip last year to go in February of this year to visit him and meet his family and just hang out. He really wanted to show me Sydney because he thought I would love the city and it aligned with World Pride. <laughs> but it was just an insane experience. I feel like I got Sydney on steroids. Sydney itself was already a city that I know I could fall in love with. It has such diversity of experiences. The weather is incredible. The beaches are beautiful. It's very sunny days. Like everything I love was in Sydney. And then it was super gay. Like I came out of the airport after my flight from LA and there were rainbows everywhere. There was a drag queen, men in their swimwear handing out free swimsuits, just like the prideful spirit all over the city. Um, and then we got to go outdoor music festival. There were parties. It was just a whole nine yards and it was such a fun, positive experience. The crowd was super diverse and coming from all around the world. It was great. I, I loved it. So you said there were a bunch of performances. So who was like your favorite, your favorite performer? I would say probably Nicole from the Pussycat Dolls. She had a performance at the Bondi Beach Party, which is the most iconic party that happens. I think every year in Sydney for Carnival, um, which fell at the same time as World Pride this year, so it kind of was turned into a World Pride thing. Um, it was on the grass right behind Bondi Beach, which is like an iconic, beautiful beach. It was all the gays, everyone was wearing the most beautiful outfits, and she had a great performance that went from sunset into the night. It was like a dream come true. That's so awesome. That's so great. Well, right now, there's so many Pride celebrations happening, both in America and across the globe. For someone who's maybe listening and it's their first time going to Pride and they're maybe a little nervous, a little anxious mm. about entering that environment, what tip would you give them? I would say no matter where you're at in your journey, in your coming out journey, trust that you'll have a good time and that there's no pressure. I feel like something about this community is that there's going to be a space for everyone, no matter your personality type or how comfortable you are. I used to go to Gay Pride when I was in middle school, closeted and still pretending to be straight. And I still feel comfortable because it doesn't matter what your sexual orientation is, you will still get to enjoy the pride spirit, the just positive mindset that people are in. So just go out, have fun, bring your friends, even if it's all straight people and you'll have the best time and maybe even learn a little bit about yourself and about the community that we don't get to see all year round. When was your first pride? I think last year was the first time I went. Have you, wow. have you just done Milwaukee or? Yeah, I've never, I've I've like gone formally to other prides, mm. but I need to go to Chicago. Chicago's insane, I think. But my first pride was Toronto when I was in college, and that was like the gayest event I ever been to in my life. Holy shit! <laughs> I just had to talk about it because it was so crazy. <laughs> no, seriously, because what you said, like you know, like I brought a bunch of straight friends because I didn't have like gay, uh -huh. a lot of gay friends back then when I was in college, and it was just like a summer thing, and I remember going and just being like, look at all these people that are in support of this and like having fun and are so like open with themselves in public. I was still in my like, clo not closeted, but my like internalized homophobia phase back then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so for me going to this event was like this, this mind blown moment where I was like, look how much fun they're having because they don't give a shit about like being judged for just being themselves, being gay, having fun. I, it was like one of those moments where I kind of like flipped, it you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So I had to share, sorry. No, I that's, just, so like, cool. I that's so that. cool. I love that. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Well, thank you so much, Noah, for taking the time to be here. And I hope you have the best pride ever. See you in Sydney next year. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, thank the you. Next, the, the next World Pride's in DC, so we'll have to be <gasps> in, in attendance. Oh. Yes. Uh -oh. <laughs> I heard about that. Well, we'll see you there, Noah. I'm sure you'll be in attendance. Bet it'll happen. <laughs> thank you so much, Noah. Thank you. Happy Pride. Bye. Bye Noah.